Good morning. You want to see how we made this uh, railing for our deck ramp we built last week? Stay tuned, because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning, and welcome to another Memphis Monday. Memphis Monday 372. Last week, actually yesterday, we finished uh, building a ramp for my little puppy to get up on to get up on my deck well the dog just scampers right up it it's no problem but when i went to use it i discovered that the first part was a little too steep to be going down for a 75 year old geezer to be going down without a handrail the story is the sl the slope uh, the minimum slope for a a walking ramp is 1 in 12 which means for every unit uh, you know every unit of run you can only drop uh, one unit of rise so the correct the minimum correct slope for a walking ramp a non-handicap walking ramp is 1 to 1 to 12 well the ramp that the ramp the top part of the ramp up there is 1 and 8 which is about 4 inches too much um, slope so anyway we're going to put a handrail in the first part of it and but we're not going to get that handrail put in Unless we do what? That's right. Let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. This is the old uh, handrail and about three things we need to cover. First of all, we can't just carry this handrail out uh, because it's, it's at the wrong slope. The slope on this is actually around uh, one to two, which means for every foot it goes out or for every uh, two feet it goes or one foot it goes out it goes down uh, only or for every two feet it goes out it goes down one foot so it has a slope of one to two uh, which is way too steep it's it's the steep the slope here is based on the stairs and we have a ramp, not stairs. And then the second thing is it's the wrong color. It doesn't match this. Um, so the first uh, operation is going to take uh, to demo this and take it out. I don't know if you remember uh, last year we made some repairs to my uh, deck, my exposed deck, and all the screws were... were uh, were rusted away and we couldn't figure out the problem well here's the screws that they were that they used to put it together with and I can't tell if they're zinc zinc coated or or uh, stainless steel but they're not very good deck screws here's what a real deck screw looks like this is coated It'll last forever. I took those uh, screws out. I couldn't get these out down to the bottom, so I'll just pull them out gorilla fashion. I'm not going to show you all this demolition, but I thought this was interesting. This is uh, this is actually how these uh, rails are installed there's no notch here and you and you put lag bolts in just like they did now if you use these big 9 16 inch lag bolts uh, if you don't want to use a socket wrench you can use an impact driver like this um, but the takeaway is if you do you need to get one of these some of these black sockets because this thing will light up your life 
and it'll tear up those uh, silver sockets right quick. I got the demo done. What I'm doing here is I've got to reproduce this pole uh, the same height above the deck uh, and the same spacing vis-a-vis uh, -vis the edge of the uh, platform here. Now to do that, it means that my uh, My end pole down here is going to be right next to that uh, the deck, which means I have to put some uh, a block in here to attach to. And I'm attaching uh, attaching it with nails and lag bolts. These are six inch lag bolts. Well, I got the main framework up. There's some uh, corner post there. It's where it attaches to the other, to the deck post. And there's the stringers we're going to be putting the pickets on. I want to get all this roughed in because I want to get all that uh, square and plumb before we start uh, attaching the post. That's what I'm doing now. You remember one of the things we did last week was made a big deal about making sure this um, joist was connected to this uh, platform frame really really well remember we use cleats and joist hangers um, because this post here this post here is going to be attached to that joist of course I got a six inch thick uh, block here that's attached to it with lag bolts but and I've also got this post sitting on the ground these are the bolts these are the bolts we took out uh, from the other post and we're going to drive them in with the uh, this big thing Okay, so we got that corner post in. And now we're going to do the same thing for this uh, center post here that goes uh, halfway between that span. And we're going to connect it in the same way. Now what I've done here is Put in this uh, blocking just on the other side. It's like on the other side, but this blocking I installed using three-eighths inch by eight-inch long carriage bolts, and then I'm attaching the uh, post itself. It's a uh, it's touching the concrete up here and I'm putting four eight inch lag bolts in 
so that'll go through the post and through all pretty much all the uh, the uh, blocking here and I'm using my uh, impact driver what I've done is uh, I've drilled three inch or three eighths inch pot pilot holes and but only about halfway and then we'll just uh, so it'll go in real easy at first and about halfway through it'll dig in so it's only biting about four inches And you notice I put washers on these, otherwise the bolts will dig in like this one did. I'm going to install the pickets. I guess that's what these are called. Before I put the top cap on, um, one reason is I get to use my tall spacer here. Now this might be a takeaway here. Whenever you're building onto a deck or something, you need to try to duplicate the uh, sequences and patterns and stuff that they're using and they have a three inch gap here which is a little tight but we need to duplicate that over here so that we don't our eye doesn't follow this line and suddenly it changes over here that'd be a disaster so my so my spacer is three inches now theoretically, if I use this spacer all along here and just keep doing it, these, if my first one was, first one was uh, plumb, all the rest of them will be plumb. But I don't know if you knew this or not, the world isn't perfect. And so about every three or four, you need to double check and make sure you're still dead on and then make whatever small corrections you need to. Uh, that'll keep you from uh, what will happen if you have a small error that small error will just keep multiplying see by having this long spacer I can set it on the ground down here and Now, if you're a young fellow and you're um, building a deck for somebody, you're probably going to want to use deck screws. And here's an example. They make a lot of good deck screws. Uh, by rights, I probably should be putting those uh, balusters in using these uh, two and a half inch uh, deck screws. But what I'm using are these two and three eighths hot dipped ring shank nails they look like this and you'll see on the box they're rated for exterior use and this, there's a there's a color difference here uh, this brown color it'll tell you that it's it's rated for outdoor use and those are the ones you want. Well, we got all the pickets in. 
now we need to put in this top rail uh, we'll work on that top rail in the shop let's go do that first thing I want to do is run it through the uh, drum sander and uh, so I'm taking the good side and running it through and that'll take off all the you know all the stamps and stuff on it Not everybody, everybody uses this uh, ramp, will use this handrail. But 99.9% .9 of the people will at least touch this end right here. So I'm going to put a radius on it and hit it with a router. I got that handrail in. I'll tell you what we'll do. It's uh, it's getting dark out. Um, I'll show you the whole project in the morning. Well, here's our uh, railing for our uh, deck ramp. Show some tricks on how to put those in. another view of it overall I'm pretty satisfied with the whole project well that does it for uh, Memphis Monday 372 today we built that uh, that railing for our deck ramp uh, I got out, out here this morning and uh, cleaned up all our tools and wood scraps and it's, I, I spent about as much time bringing all that stuff over there and bringing it back as I did working on the ramp uh, you know that's that's different between me and a professional you know a uh, a pro, uh, you know a pro doing that would have uh, gone out there with a nail gun and a skill saw and done whole job in two hours uh, but that's the reason you can't beat a professional all right so uh, I think there's some takeaways so like favorite and share and all the stuff you on the internet most important make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday thanks for playing along